Thank you very much. So uh, welcome to the uh, Lincoln Center Summer Children's Concert Series. And uh, we'd like to thank, first of all, the sponsors of this concert series, which are the Lincoln Center Support League and the Fort Fund. And uh, so we'd like to welcome all of you here today. And we're so glad to have you here. Now, we can't see you, of course. I have no idea what you guys look like. I'm sure you're wonderful. But uh, we're here on stage. and. We're at the Lincoln Center on stage, and, and we're performing for you. I will try to act as if I can see you, and um, I'll pretend that I can see you, too. But uh, we are uh, Pan Jumbies is the name of our group. Pan is this instrument that I'm playing, the steel pan. Uh, <laughs> And uh, jumbi, that's a word from the Caribbean, and it means someone who's obsessed with something. If you're really into food, you might be a food jumbi, or if you're really into money, you could be a money jumbi. Well, I'm a pan jumbi, and I love to play steel pans. Now, the other members of the group, uh, on electric bass, I have John Thornburg. <laughs> John Thornburg. And on the drums, Mr. Rich Reichel. Thank you, Rich. And I'm Don Prorak, and I play the Steel Pans. Uh, once again, our name of our group is Pan Jumbies. Now, the Steel Pan comes from a faraway island, the island of Trinidad. We have a town of Trinidad in Colorado, but uh, this is not Trinidad, Colorado. This is Trinidad, West Indies. If you were to uh, take a running start off the end of Florida and you started running south all across all the islands, the very last island you would step on before you went to, got to uh, South America would be Trinidad. And uh, Trinidad is where they invented the steel pan, but it wasn't something that you know somebody just one day sat down in a laboratory with that, I think I'll invent the steel pan today. Well, no, they, uh, it took a long time, and it was a lot of it was kind of by accident. If you go way back in history, back to about 1884, uh, the government had actually banned uh, musical instruments for carnival, and so they had to do something else. And the long story, or the short story, is that they uh, ultimately invented the steel pan. We'll tell you the long story a little bit later. Um, so the song that we played was called Tragarit Road, which was one of my favorite places in Trinidad. I've been there quite a few times, and uh, Tragarit Road, there's a number of steel band, big steel bands. They have a whole orchestras of steel pans, and a number of big steel bands that have their 
uh, pan yards, they call them. That's where they rehearse uh, on Tragerite Road, and there's some great restaurants and all kinds of wonderful places on Tragerite Road. But um, that song is in the style we call Calypso, and Calypso is a style, style of music that comes from Trinidad as well. Uh, there's another island that a lot of people associate with Caribbean music, and that is the island of Jamaica. Now, Jamaica is about a thousand miles away from Trinidad, and well, they do play steel pans there, but that's not where they were invented. And another thing about that Jamaica did invent, though, is a style of music called reggae, and a lot of people have heard of reggae music. Uh, we're going to play a reggae song that I wrote, and um, this song kind of tells you how to dance to reggae music, because a lot of people maybe put a little bit too much motion into it. And so the song is called Step Gently, Don't Jump. Don't jump, okay? No jumping. Now, uh, as we go through the song, I'm gonna be watching, I can't see you. I'm gonna be watching to see if you jump, because I, uh, w we were playing a, a gig a long time ago, a concert down in, um, Pagosa Springs, Colorado, and there were some college students there, and every time I sang Don't Jump, they would jump. Now, don't do You guys won't do that, will you? No, I, I'll, I'll be watching, okay? So this is reggae music, and this is a song of mine that's called Step Gently, Don't Jump. Step gently, don't jump Charming up the music Step gently, don't jump You gotta hold on me Step gently, don't jump Charming up my heartbeat Step gently, don't jump You got a dead grip on me, so around the movement starting in your feet it's smooth up to your knees until you dancing like the rastafari step gently don't jump jamming up the music step gently don't jump you gotta hold on me Gently, don't jump Charming up a heartbeat Step gently, don't jump You got a dead grip on me, so Sway the movement, make me love the beat. My heart wants to stand still. You dance so sweet, you give me body a chill. Step gently, don't jump. Charming up the music. Step gently, don't jump. You gotta hold on me. Step Gently, don't jump Charming up my heartbeat Step gently, don't 
jump, you got a death grip on me, so step gently, don't jump. Gently, don't jump. Step gently, don't jump. Step gently, don't jump. Step gently, don't jump. Thank you. You jumped, didn't you? Yeah, I thought I could tell. I could tell that you jumped. Okay, so now remember I told you that we would uh, tell you the long story of how the pan was invented. So I'm going to move over to the other microphone, and it's time for a history lesson. So uh, everybody be sure you're taking notes because there will be a test later. Right. So as I mentioned earlier, back in 1884, the government of Trinidad, which was then, they were actually a British colony, and the government, uh, well, there, first of all, let me tell you that there's a big celebration every year in, in Trinidad called Carnival. And Carnival is like a big party through the whole country. Everybody in the country out in the streets singing, dancing, having a great time. And it's a really good way to bring people together. So uh, we love the concept of Carnival. But back in the 1880s, uh, the government of Trinidad, they thought that Carnival was getting a little too rowdy for their tastes. And so what they did in 1884, they banned all musical instruments. They said you couldn't play drums, you couldn't play trumpets, you couldn't play horns, strings, any of those things. But the people of Trinidad are pretty creative. So what they found, they have a lot of bamboo down there. And bamboo is, uh, well, it's, it's these big, now, if we see bamboo around here, it's usually pretty small, but these have these big trees of jam bamboo. And John is playing some bamboo here. This is North American bamboo. It uh, takes on the characteristics of PVC pipe for survival purposes. But uh, the, uh, the bamboo uh, was, became a rhythm instrument that they would use to accompany singing. And so they were able to still have carnival and to celebrate because they invented this bamboo orchestra. And they called it tambou bamboo, which came from a Fr French, well, the French word for drum is tambour, like we have a tambourine, right? And so tambou bamboo became this form of, of uh, music. And it really became quite popular, and they uh, used it for quite a few years, even after the uh, instrument band was lifted and they were using regular instruments, but they still used the bamboo. But bamboo, sometimes they'd be going through the streets and all of a sudden the bamboo would, as they say, mash up. It would break and it would probably be at the worst possible time. So they would have to find something else to use in place of the bamboo. And sometimes they found metal things like which wouldn't break, right? And so they found you know, like uh, garbage cans, biscuit tins, or even parts of cars. And um, Rich has an instrument that they call the iron. And if you look at it carefully, it's actually the brake drum from a car. So we're going to try to see how that bamboo and brake drum, the iron, sound together. Pretty cool. So, as I said, they also started using these other cans, like uh, trash cans, and they call that a dustbin in Trinidad. Trash cans and maybe uh, paint cans and uh, various size containers in order to uh, just play other rhythms along with that. And you might have seen something like this. This is kind of what they sell for tourists in Trinidad. It's uh, kind of a steel pan, but they, this might have been like the bottom of a paint can or something like that. And it would sound, uh, and first of all, they would just play it for rhythm. But then they found that if they made different sized dents in that metal, they could actually tune those dents to notes of the scale and play tunes.
But after a while, we well, could only fit a few notes on this small pan, so they started wanting to play more and more complicated music. So they started to uh, make use bigger and bigger cans. And one of the biggest uh, cans that you can get hold of here, let me put this away and come back. is a 55-gallon oil drum. And they would cut off the bottom of that 55-gallon drum and make a pan like this. And with a big pan like this, you could fit lots and lots of notes on it and be able to play all the notes of the black keys and the white keys of the piano. Um, so, and they had lots of oil drums down there because Trinidad, well, it's an oil-producing nation, and so they had their own. And plus, the U.S. Navy had a base down there at that time. And uh, this is, we're talking now about the 1940s, around World War II. And so the U.S. had a base there, and uh, they were throwing away a lot of oil drums. So the uh, people would pick them up and tune them and come up with something that sounded like this. But like I said, you have all the black keys and white keys of the piano on here, so we can play all kinds of music. So what I'd like to do now is play you a little old-time pan music. Now, this is a very, very old pan. This pan is probably about as old as I am. And um, it's probably made sometime in the 1950s. And uh, this was uh, made by a man named Kim Loy Wong, who just passed away not too long ago. So let me play my old-time pan. I, I love this pan. It has a different sound from the modern pans, but... It's a sound that I really enjoy playing with. So here we go. Thank you, my good friend, the long time pan, as they would call it in Trinidad. And I hope you enjoyed that. Now, one thing over the years, though, they started making the tuning a lot more uh, refined. So, for example, here's the same note on this pan. This is an F. And the same note on this pan. Hear that nice ringing sound? And so that became more popular, and they started developing these instruments. And now, actually, they have a full orchestra of uh, steel pans in Trinidad, and uh, all the way from bass to soprano and everything in between. Now, uh, a single pan is usually, that's the soprano pan that has the highest notes and the smallest notes, so you can fit more notes on just one pan. As you go down in the range of steel pans, then you have to add more pans so that you can play all the notes. And this instrument that I play is called a double second pan, and it's kind of the alto voice. So it has its notes divided up between two pans, and I have to play, have them both in order to play. Now, when you get lower and lower, sometimes they have sets of three pans because it takes a bigger area to make a lower sound. Okay, think of a, uh, you know, a, a very small drum makes a... Rich, could you play your smallest, highest drum? 
and then play your biggest, lowest drum. So the, the large drum makes a lower sound, the uh, higher drum makes, or smaller drum makes a higher sound. And same thing with the, with the uh, steel pans, is they needed more and more area to, to have the lower notes. So a set of bass pans uh, is actually six full-size oil drums. Six full-size oil drums for one set of bass, which is why we use the electric bass, because that's a whole lot of work to haul it around. And unfortunately, I have to say, I own three sets of bass pans, which is, um, nobody should have that. No, nobody should do that. But uh, not only did the uh, tuning get more sophisticated, but the, uh, the music did as well, because uh, they, with more and more, with this whole orchestra of uh, instruments, they could play just any kind of music. In fact, they like, they like to play classical music and jazz and all of that. Um, so the music got more and more complicated. And sometimes it's a lot of fun to just to play some complicated music. And so this next song we're going to do is a song that I wrote. And uh, this song is called Excess of Personality. Now, uh, how many of you are fans of the Jurassic Park movies? I, I love them. I do. I really do. And uh, I was a big fan of dinosaurs when I was a kid. And I, I just love those movies. But in the first movie, I think it was, uh, there was Dr. Ian Malcolm. And he was described as having a deplorable excess of personality. And so that's where I got the title for this song. And uh, this song is kind of excessive, I guess. Uh, there's too many notes in it, I think. But uh, it's a lot of fun to play. So we're going to go ahead and play excess of personality for you. And I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Excess of personality. I hope you enjoyed that. By the way, um, if you do have, uh, a, you know, if you're at a computer or an iPad or something like that, uh, you can send in comments, like if you have questions, if you have any questions about what, any of the stuff that we're doing, about these instruments or about Trinidad. And uh, later on, I'll try to, try to answer a few questions if you have them. Don't see any yet. So, um, as I said, the, one of the uh, main themes of this program is making your own music, just like they did in Trinidad. And they had to do it because it was necessary. Now, a lot of times, we don't really have to make music because, well, we're bombarded with music all the time. You uh, have music in the car, music in the grocery store, music everywhere you go. And so you don't think so much about having to make music. But many, many years ago, if you wanted to hear music, you either had to go someplace where somebody was playing music or else you had to play your, play your own music. In fact, families used to often sit around and you know somebody played the piano and they would sing songs or the guitar or something. And uh, a lot of times we get away from making our own music. Now, a great way to make music is to be in your school band or choir or orchestra. Because right now, with everything that's going on, that's a little hard, isn't it? So, uh, so sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. And that's what we'd like to talk about right now, is to um, find ways to make music on your own. Because musical instruments... Well, they all, they all came about kind of like the steel pan. It's kind of an organic process where they just uh, evolve over time. You know, drums, for example, were some of the first musical instruments, and they started out as somebody finding a, a hollow log, and they would uh, hit it with a stick, and it would make kind of a resonant sound. It would, And they could use that both to make music or even to send messages, things like that. Like maybe you'd come up with a signal to... Uh, tell your family that you're almost home, so you'd uh, beat on the log and they know, oh, here he comes. So uh, so that was a drum, and then later maybe somebody figured out to stretch an animal skin over the end of that, uh, of that drum, and, and uh, that made a different sound. So that's how we came up with the drums that we have today. Uh, and then other instruments, for example, wind instruments, somebody would take a cow horn and blow into the end of it and make a sound like a trumpet. And then they figured out, well, if I uh, make a hole in the side of it, then maybe I can actually play more than one note. And little by little, they developed uh, these, all of these brass instruments and woodwind instruments. So if you play the trumpet or the clarinet or the tuba, any of those instruments, they all came from something like a cow horn. And then we have string instruments. Now, string instruments, I uh, think of uh, an ancient hunter going through the woods. He's kind of bored. He starts tapping on the string of his bow with the arrow and making a sound. And that later on turned into all the string instruments that we have today, like the uh, violin, the uh, guitar, the electric bass. <laughs> so a uh, long cry from that bow and arrow and tapping on the string, but still uh, a way of making music. So what I'd like you to do right now is... Uh, is look around your room, wherever you are, and see if you can find something that you could make a sort of musical sound. And it has, doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm going to move over here to uh, just show you a few things that I have. For example, I found a cat food can, and here's a, the cat food can with a, uh, a chopstick. Now, we're going to make use of that later. And so you might find something like that or something else around the room that you can make a sound with and, uh, and be ready to do this. Now, I wrote a new song actually just for this performance. And this song is called Make Some Music. And that's what I would like you to do right now is try to make some music with me. Now this song is uh, another song in you know, a style that comes from Jamaica. This is a style called ska. It's a little bit like reggae, but usually a little faster. And uh, so this is called Make Some Music. And you're, uh, you'll you probably recognize, well, you know, once you start hearing it, you'll, the words to it are, make some music, everybody can play. So you can sing along with that if you can uh, find it. And then also, if you have an instrument that you found around your, your room, or maybe you even have a real instrument, you can play along. Feel free to do that. Uh, and again, you know, if you have any questions, send them in on the chat, and I'll try to get to them in a little bit.
make some music. Make some music, everybody can play. Your very own music, in your own special way. Make some music, with whatever's at hand. Some wood and pencils, and an empty tin can. Your favorite noise, it could be anything. A bunch, a, a piece of junk that's sounding really sweet when you keep a beat. Make some music with whatever you got. A pair of chopsticks and an old kitchen pot. Make some music your hands and your voice people need music it's not really a choice let's start out with my cat food can here oh. nope not there yet actually I want to do this first Let's see if we can make some music just with our hands and our feet. Now, I'm going to play some rhythms, and you try to play them back to me. And I can't hear you. Well, I can imagine that I can. But see if you can imitate what I do. Now I'm going to get my cat food can. Play your instrument. Oh, that sounds good. this yogurt container too. Maybe you've got some sticks, any kind of sticks. These are some kind of fancy sticks. Or a stick with some grooves in it. Or a cheese grater works great for this too.
but keep playing your instruments for the rest of the song. Or something that you sing A piece of junk That's sounding real sweet When you make a beat Make some music Everybody can play Your very own music In your own special way Make some music With your hands and your voice People need music, it's not really a choice. People need music, it's not really a choice. People need music, it's not really a choice. Make some music. Thank you very much. Still don't see any comments here, so uh, I guess we won't have a question and answer period. Oh, wait, there are some. It's down in the corner. I got to look for the. Hey, give me just a second to look at these comments and see if there's any questions I can answer. Well, I just see some messages that say we're amazing and uh, also hi. And uh, so thank you very much for, for sending us those messages. And, but I don't see any questions to answer. So uh, I guess uh, we'll, we'll go on with, uh, with our program. At this point, it's, we're down to just about the end, and we're going to play our last tune. And uh, so I'd like to once more introduce the people in the group. Uh, John Thornburg on the electric bass. And on the drums, Mr. Rich Reichel. And I'm Don Prorak. And once again, we are Pan Jumbies. And we would like to thank the Lincoln Center for presenting us here today and for pre presenting this whole series. I hope that you're tuning in for other concerts as well and that uh, you're really enjoying this. I know that things are a little weird right now in the, in the world, and so we have to do things a little bit differently. And so this is a... <laughs> Very interesting show for us. We're being doing a show. We're facing the wall, and we're not. Uh, in, we're, the audience would be to our backs right now. We're facing the wall and the cameras, and of course, we have no idea what you guys look like, what you're doing out there. I think you jumped on step gently, don't jump. I really do. I, I, I just have a feeling that you did. Now we're going to uh, finish up. Oh, and I, uh, we, let's see. Did I thank our sponsors? Let me make sure I did. So our sponsors are the Lincoln Center Support League and also the Fort Fund. So uh, I'd like to thank them for presenting this series. And I'd like to thank all the staff here that have been doing such a great job setting us up here and trying to make us feel like we're doing a real concert. Well, we are. We're doing a real concert, but we can't see the audience. Mm -hmm. And they've been just doing a wonderful job. So thanks so much to all of them. And uh, so we're going to finish with a song called Trinidad State of Mind. And this is a song that I wrote actually quite a long time ago, and then it kind of, I never, never performed it. I don't know why exactly. And so uh, it, it, I just forgot about it. And recently I remembered it, and, uh, and, and this will be the first time that we're actually performing this song in front of an audience. It's called Trinidad State of Mind. And I hope that with all our talk about Trinidad and uh, the steel pans, that we have put you in a Trinidad st state of mind. And maybe you can try to figure out where I sing those words, and maybe you can sing along, Trinidad state of mind. So uh, once again, we're Pan Jumbies. Thank you very much for being here. And um, it's time to, it's party time. It's time to lime. So get yourself in a Trinidad state of mind. It's party time, it's time to lime, so get yourself in a Trinidad state of mind. The engine room is on the move, so get yourself in a steel band groove. 
close When that steel band started to play It's juve morning every day And when that soca feature you here It's kind of both time Any time of year Here it comes Trinidad state of mind So free yourself from the northern climb Get yourself in a Trinidad state of mind Will soon improve, so get yourself in a steel band groove. Cause when that steel band starts to play, it's juve morning every day. And when that soca sound you hear, it's carnival time any time of year. Trinidad state of mind. of mine state of mind. Thank you very much. We're Pan Jumbies, and uh, thanks to all of you for coming out, tuning in. Hope to see you live sometime in the very near future. Thank you.